When were robots, replicants, and automatons first imagined and created? Most people assume that the first moving machines and animated statues were invented during the Middle Ages. But was it possible that the idea, the concepts of automatons could have happened much earlier? Robots are surprisingly ancient, going back to the myths of classical Greece and further in antiquity, to Babylon, China, India, and even to the pre-Columbian cultures of Mesoamerica. It turns out that 2,500 years ago, some ancient Greek myths envisioned how one could fabricate artificial life, robotic servants, lifelike replicas of humans and animals, and even AI. The process that Greeks imagined for these entities could be called biotechne, ancient Greek for life through craft, and the root of our word biotechnology. Adrian Mayer, historian at Stanford University, analyzes classical Greek myths and other ancient cultures' tales about fabricating artificial life, automatons, self-moving devices, and artificial intelligence in her book Gods and Robots. She wrote that the mythical artificial replicas were specifically described by Greeks as made, not born. Quote, These were synthetic beings, and they were imagined as products of technology. And that was the crucial definition and distinction between what is biological and artificial, human and non-human. The most ancient Greek story about robots was about Talos. He was a giant bronze automaton made by god of invention and technology, Hephaestus. Talos was a killer robot and a self-moving machine. He marched around the large island three times a day, and he was programmed to spot invaders and then pick up and hurl boulders to sink approaching ships. In close combat, Talos could heat his bronze body to red hot, and then he would grab up victims and crush them to his chest. The inner workings of this bronze android confirmed his technological origins. According to the myth, Talos had a single tube or artery running from his head to his toe. Now, instead of blood, Ikor pulsed in that tube or artery. So Talos was thought of as a machine powered by Ikor that was a mysterious fluid of the gods. His entire system was sealed with some kind of a bronze bolt on his ankle. In the myth, Talos was defeated by removing that bronze bolt. Ancient Greek artworks depicted him as a metallic robot, but with human-like features. He was sort of a cyborg. In other words, machine-human hybrid. No surviving ancient source says Talos had wings or flew, but on the Phaestus coins, Talos has wings and resembles an angel. A being that in Christian tradition is regarded as a god's messenger and a warrior. Considering this, the ancient Greek perception of such entities as some kind of products of technology made by the gods makes one wonder, what made them think so? Another reference to automatons can be found in the ancient Greek story about Argonauts. In order to win the Golden Fleece, Jason had to accomplish a set of impossible tasks. One of those tasks was to subdue a pair of hulking bronze bulls that breathed fire. And they were also made by Hephaestus, the god of invention. If it was some kind of technology, then these bulls could look like that complex libation artifact from Calcite dated the time the story was written down. It has three horizontal registers, the top two of which has a row of dentals topped with horizontal moldings that resemble ventilation grates with a firing nozzle stylized as a bull's head. In another myth about Prometheus, who was mostly known as a titan who stole fire and brought technology to help first people, there is incredible reference to unmanned technology. In the myth, Zeus, the all-powerful king of gods and man, was a vindictive tyrant. To punish Prometheus, he chained him to a mountain. According to the myth, Hephaestus forged a metallic drone looking like an eagle that came like clockwork every day to torment Prometheus by tearing out his liver. But for its form, it was not for the ordinary bird. Here is the quote from the Argonautica. Each afternoon, the gleaming eagle flew over our ship with a loud roaring noise, and we saw how the feathers of each wing rose and fell and moved up and down like a bank of polished oars. In Greek mythology, Hephaestus is the god that had an impressive portfolio of artificial beings, animated statues, and automatons. He was a divine blacksmith. 
According to Homer's Iliad, he made 20 automated bellows for his forge. The automatic bellows blasted more or less air as needed as Hephaestus was working. Another legend with the detailed description of the sophisticated technology employed in the battle shields of Achilles constructed by Hephaestus attracts the attention of modern engineers such as Stephanos Papadus. Papadus notes that Hephaestus uses composite materials possessing elements of almost modern technology to make so-called laminated structures with very different properties. The results from experimental study not only confirmed that Homer's descriptions have outstanding accuracy, but they also provide indication of very advanced knowledge of science and technology of materials possessed by the Mycenaean Greeks. The account in Iliad corresponds to a laminated composite structure they had, consisting of five consecutive metal laminates with very different mechanical properties. In fact, the shield consists of two external laminates of hard bronze, two internal ones of tin, and a central one of pure soft gold, a complete computer simulation of its elastoplastic behavior at large deformations showed that this structure exhibits maximum penetration resistance. This unique detailed description is the first known application of laminated structures in human history. Papadus did analysis and parameter study based on computer simulation first, and then performed some laboratory experiments and have confirmed that Homer's descriptions of the battle behavior of the shield have amazing accuracy and also revealed important elements of advanced technology disguised as miraculous power of the gods. Hephaestus also devised a wondrous fleet of self-driving carts that delivered nectar and ambrosia to the gods' banquets and returned to him when they were empty. But the most amazing invention of Hephaestus was a crew of life-sized, lifelike women made of gold to serve as his personal assistants. Homer in about 700 BC describes these golden servants as looking just like real young women. They were moving efficiently in his workshop. These female androids anticipated the gods' every need and they were endowed with strength and reason. Even more astonishing, they were equipped with all the knowledge of the gods. In other words, they amounted to a mythological version of artificial intelligence. The capstone of Hephaestus was another lifelike replicant, one that can interact with mortals on Earth. And in this myth, Zeus commanded him to fabricate a beautiful female android to punish humans for accepting fire stolen by Prometheus. And this project resulted in a realistic artificial woman, endowed with human characteristics, especially deceit. This marvelous creation was named Pandora. She was described as an artificial young woman, and she was made, not born. This living statue is an artificial intelligence agent in the form of a seductive young woman sent to Earth, carrying a sealed jar or a box filled with evils. But how many of these ancient legends and stories about robots could be based on real tech examples? We can find a hint in one outstanding Greek bronze computing device, the Antikythera mechanism. It is the first known device that mechanized predictions of scientific theories. It calculated a planetary motion with a complex system of gear trains mounted on other gears. The important moment is that its portability and compact design is a must in the construction of automatons and robots. In this Nature magazine article, researchers conclude, quote, our work reveals the Antikythera mechanism is a beautiful conception translated by superb engineering into a device of genius. It challenges all our preconceptions about technological capabilities of the ancient Greeks. That leaves one to wonder, to what extent were some civilizations of the past technically advanced at once? persistent thread of myth describing Prometheus as the creator of the human race. Ancient group of artists illustrated this legend in an extraordinary way. They show Prometheus constructing the first human being from scratch as a product of technology. In a series of detailed gems for seals and rings, an Etruscan artist shows Prometheus as a kind of engineer. He's using tools to build the first human prototype from the inside out. He began with the skeleton as the framework, 
and the skeletons are extremely rare in the ancient art. These gems really stand out as a kind of scientific vision of the first humans being engineered piece by piece. This paradoxical perspective taps into the timeless idea that humans are somehow automata of the gods, and it is incredible how much the human body and mind act like a bio-machine. A computer is the best model for how it all works. The human spine, when dissected under live conditions, looks much like a very elaborate electrical circuit, with color-coded wires as nerves and blood vessels. It looks much like the electrical panel inside an expensive satellite. You hear scientists speak about our brain as the central processor and our nerves as power supply to our muscles. The power source to the body is our energy, which is obtained from the food we eat which is created by the energy in sunlight. Some would say our RAM is the prefrontal lobe, and our hard drive is housed in our hippocampus, and the motherboard is likened to our skeleton, which provides the structure to our body. DNA stores biophotonic particles as data, where it is transferred through our body very much like optical data in fiber optic wiring. DNA also has a code which follows the same logic and rules as computer language as it relates to syntax and grammar. If true, this leads one to assume that we have a programmable body via DNA. If we assume this model of human physiology, then it's reasonable to think the human body, given its computer-like functions, could act as a transmitter and receiver not much different than our home computers and Wi-Fi systems. This thought was investigated by researchers from Columbia University in this paper. A fractal antenna's response differs markedly from traditional antenna designs in that it is capable of operating with good to excellent performance at many different frequencies simultaneously. Quote, Since DNA can interact with electromagnetic fields over a wide range of frequencies and does not appear to be limited to an optimal frequency, it has the functional properties of a fractal antenna. The range of this fractal antenna is much greater than expected of an ordinary antenna, and it may even extend beyond the radio frequency range. The electromagnetic fields is believed to have been an important driving force in evolution, and the ability of DNA to act as a fractal antenna could account for the large difference in the rate of molecular evolution of simple cell organisms with and without nucleus. They noted that many factors undoubtedly affected the rate of evolution, but the great acceleration of the process shown in the fossil record is coincident with the appearance of fractal DNA. Moreover, taking the biotech computer model a step further, the calcium in our bones and its physical hard structure could act much like a large antenna to aid in sending and receiving data, as well as house many of our DNA and stem cells in the bone marrow. In this model, the human body and DNA become a biological internet, and the data is likely stored with light photons, which in recent studies indicates an ability for the photon to share an exact quantum twin state without restrictions of time and space. Then, almost subconscious fear that we could be soulless machines manipulated by other powers poses a profound philosophical question since ancient times. If we are the creations of the gods or unknown forces, how can we have self-identity, agency, and free will? Daniel Wegner from the Department of Psychology of Harvard University investigated this question in this article. He is asking, what if our minds play tricks on our impression of conscious will again and again and never reveal to us how our actions are actually caused? The set of experiments with spontaneous and intentional finger movement indicated that a scalp-recorded brain readiness potential preceded the movement by a minimum of 550 milliseconds. Quote, This finding suggests that the experience of consciously willing an action begins after brain events that set the action into motion. The brain creates both the thought and the action, leaving the person to infer that the thought is causing the action. In other words, similar to bioautomaton, our brain makes a decision before you know about it and can trick our consciousness to experience free will. Does all this mean that conscious thought does not cause action? It does not mean this at all. But at the same time, 
The experience of conscious will is a marvelous trick of the mind that has kind of a super user access to our authorship. In the other paper, researchers from University of Bergen were working on prediction of human errors by studying brain activity patterns preceding such errors. The results were striking. They found a set of brain regions that predicted performance errors and discovered that brain activity changes started to evolve 30 seconds before the error. According to their study, in the future, by monitoring these brain states in real-world situations with appropriate devices, one can predict a person's performance errors at least 6 seconds ahead in time, with linear trends starting as early as 30 seconds before an action. The notion that humans arose as the automata or playthings of an imperfect and evil demiurge were forcefully articulated in the ancient movement of Gnosticism continuing debate of human autonomy in our times by nowadays thinkers. Ever after, all ancient myths demonstrate how the higher entities who we sometimes call the gods and goddesses play out their own power games manipulating, withholding, rewarding, and punishing generations of mortals for eternity. And soon enough, humankind itself would develop the urge to create and control life, just like the gods.